Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Do We Know Them, episode 31. I'm Jesse Smiles. I feel like an anchor. And I'm Lily Marston. What did you say? I feel like an anchor whenever I'm like, and I'm Jesse Smiles. Someone even said that I that I do my updates in like a news anchor voice. And I was like, oh, I don't mean to. Mm. <laughs> it's not intentional. Well, I mean, voiceovers, you feel like you have to like really enunciate. You know what I'm saying? Guys, enough of the freaking nonsense. Sorry, I was about to just jump because I'm so excited to see you try the pink sauce that I was just about to segue straight into it because I see the bag of Popeyes from this, what is that called? From the, my peripheral. peripheral. I see yeah. the bag. Yeah, I see the Popeyes. I'm excited. I did get Popeyes <laughs> as a vehicle for da, 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 the, the pink, pink sauce. sauce. Should we begin by saying that for you guys, I bought this because otherwise there's no way in hell that I would waste any money on this. It was over $7. It used to be 20 Do you remember? Oh, from her, from her directly it was 20 Yeah, in the like plastic bottles <laughs> that she had. You were paying extra for botulism? Mm -hmm. Okay, actually it says here that it now is exclusively manufactured for which it feels like it should be by but um dave's gourmet llc they just want you to know it's not in her kitchen they're just like please <laughs> we swear <laughs> i mean it is just an address so i don't know but um no apparently it's like a new company that's making it yeah so dave's gourmet from my understanding makes hot sauce i don't know if she contacted him i don't know the lore of it all but somehow they got to collaborate on the pink sauce which Really, we shouldn't call it pink sauce. We should call it peach sauce because that shit ain't pink. Yeah, I got it. And I was like, well, I mean, the label is pink. <laughs> um, but also, I want to say, I so I drove fucking 45 minutes because only one Walmart in like the greater Los Angeles area even had it in stock. And then I get to this Walmart and I'm walking down the aisle. I'm like, where the fuck is it? And like, I didn't place an order ahead of time to then pick up because I was like, it's not gonna sell out in the hour that it takes to get there. And I'm walking up and down this fucking aisle and I'm like, why don't I see it? Also, my phone had like no service. So I'm like on the website trying to look because it tells you even what aisle it's on mm -hmm. if you put the store. But I'm like trying to load the store and then my phone was about to die. So I'm like panicking, trying to figure it out. And I was expecting to like refresh it and see that it was out of stock, but it said it was. So I'm like, okay, what the hell? Keep going down this aisle. I was about to ask someone when I all of a sudden glance over and see it hiding in the back. Like someone had strategically, I don't think it was Walmart people. I think it was probably someone that was going to purchase it and come back for, I don't, I don't fucking know. But it was like stashed in the back. And this isn't like, oh, it got moved over. Like I told you it was over $7. You'll notice all the price tags here say $3. Yeah. So this wasn't even where it was supposed to be. But I did secure the bag and we have the pink sauce. And now I'm gonna try it, even though I know I'm gonna hate it. I'm really sad that I can't try it. Guys, I really tried to get my hands on this. It was located in the store nearest to me and I was so excited. So I ordered it maybe, I don't know if that was my mistake, but I ordered it for pickup. I think when you order for pickup, they like go grab it immediately and like hold it aside yeah, for yeah, you. Yeah. So I was like, that's what I want. <sighs> Long behold, I get an email from fucking Walmart saying, we don't have pink sauce, but do you want this random ass, non-related at all dressing? And I said, no, Walmart, I fucking don't. And long story short, literally in no Walmart near me, within a hundred miles, do they have pink sauce? So it's just Lily, which honestly, I'm kind of here for. Preface, okay, don't get your panties in a twist. Lily only likes like ketchup and pizza. Yeah, I was gonna say, this is, I'm a horrible person to be reviewing this because I don't like sauce, but also like, what even is it? Like, I don't, it's, it looks like salad dressing. When she started promoting it on TikTok, it was like an all purpose dressing. So she particularly, the reason why I told you to get fried chicken is because she uses it on fried chicken all the time, but it's been advertised as like being a dressing. It could be a, so like an all purpose thing, kind of like honey mustard or ranch, that it could be a salad thing, but you could also have it on virtually like anything. Oh, okay, okay. Do you like ranch? No. I <laughs> No. See, that's bad. See, I thought you at least like ranch. No, I'm not gonna like this at all. I'm, I'm positive. Well, when she showed me the ingredient list, the one thing that actually made me want to pro projectile vomit was that it has not only dragon fruit puree, which like random. That's the first ingredient. Yeah, so you know it has like the most of that in the bottle than anything else. <laughs> they were like, maybe um, if we add more, it'll be pink. <laughs> <laughs> no, I guess not. Oh well, good enough. And then it also has coconut cream, right? Oh yeah. Well, at the bottom, because at the bottom it says contain coconut, but I didn't notice it says coconut cream. I haven't had a ton of dragon fruit experiences, but the one that we had back in the day wasn't great. Coconut I don't love. Um, I think it's hilarious that there is, it says colored with titanium dioxide. I'm like, why didn't you throw in some like red number, is it red number five? No, no, like, we don't like why that one. Why don't you one. try to make it pink? <laughs> I sent Lily a TikTok where 
all the bottles on the shelf at Walmart were different colors. That's not normal. Like if it, they're all going to be peach, okay, whatever. You just couldn't like get the pink. But why are they all different colors? It's definitely like a pale. It looks like, like Thousand Island. Even like less color than that. It's almost like a beige though. Yeah, it looks like, I don't want to say anything that's going to make you possibly not want to eat it. I, I'm going to eat it. I was on cheat day. Come on. I'm used to eating things I don't like. Max, I'm sorry. I know the chicken smells good, but you need to back away. <laughs> I feel like I need to like pour it on and be like. You do. Yeah. Like the, like she does. She eats so much of it. I know. I know. But we should do smells first. And then also, by the way, when we're done, please put this in the back of your fridge and we just leave it there like a science experiment to see what happens. <laughs> The best buy date on it is um, 521.24. Shit, that's a long fucking time. Well, it doesn't even say refrigerate after opening. That's perfect. Oh, yeah, it does. So just keep it in there and we'll it check on it every separation, month. <laughs> separation is normal. Shake before using. Ooh, it's got a seal. Uh, oh, that's not a seal that came off to You could say that. This totally would have been a cheat day episode back in the day, wouldn't it have been? Like a whole pink sauce episode or something? Oh, for sure. Mm -hmm. That they would have like made things out of this. Yeah. Ew, like spaghetti, but like with that as a sauce. Oh my God, I'm going to throw up. <laughs> you got to like douse it. Wait, what's it? What does it smell like? What does it smell like? <laughs> Do you want to know what it smells like? Does it smell sour? Something tells me it when smells you sour. No, I was going to say when you walk into a subway. Oh, I love that smell. Like old banana peppers. <laughs> and something else. It's very, it's very potent smelling. Oh, Lord. It's not a, it's not subtle at all. All right. Bone apple tit. <laughs> oh. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let it drip. <laughs> oh, my God. I don't want to eat it. Do it. No, oh, I don't like it. <laughs> what does it taste like? I don't know. <laughs> you don't know? It's not something I've tasted before. It kind of tastes like, I haven't had ranch in a very long time, but definitely kind of ranchy. It tastes, I get the aftertaste of like chips with ranch on them, you know? The fake ranch, like the powdering. Oh. It feels very artificial. Oh. Do you taste dragon fruit? I don't remember what the dragon fruit tastes Honestly, like. Honestly, <laughs> not like much. Like it's a very light flavor. This is a very overwhelming flavor. Really? Like it just overwhelmed all of the chicken, 100%. And I almost, it's like the chicken wouldn't be spicy, would it? No, it was kind of spicy. Oh, really? So spicy, sour, right? Um, Like tangy. Tangy? Like a ranch. Mm -hmm. Does it just taste like a bad ranch? Kind, yeah. Yeah, just like not a high quality ranch. I mean, and again, I already, I don't like ranch, so I, I'm True. not the right person to be giving this food review, but it was very interesting any sort of aftertaste like the aftertaste tasted like i just ate chips and i had like that powder on you know that's weird like a doritos cool ranch moment 100 percent, but like not in a good way <laughs> the ingredient said ranch like flavoring mm -hmm. and that's absolutely it tastes like like the powder flavoring mm. but it's not dis it doesn't make you want to throw up no, I mean, I'm just so picky and like have such a bland palate that I think it was just overwhelming. Could you imagine someone liking it? That's what I'm trying to think, but I'm like, I have absolutely no way. God damn it. Why was it I Lily's was Walmart else. that had the pink sauce and not mine? I know. I'm sorry. This was such a waste. Should I ship it to you? I don't think that. I think that's why she got in trouble in the first place. <laughs> I was about to say yes, but yeah, probably not a good idea. Well, the thing is, I'm the sauce queen. I there. It's very rare for me Do to I find a sauce bite? I don't like. I mean, yeah, I'm not going to like throw up. It's not disgusting, okay. but it's like not something I would ever choose to eat ever again. So in summary, we have no summary. Who knows if it tastes good or bad? People on TikTok were saying it was a sweet ranch. You don't taste anything sweet, right? No. Okay. That's what like people were describing it as, but also that was the original recipe. So we don't know what Dave's Gourmet switched up. Oh yeah. No, I absolutely, that, I mean, unless my taste buds are just, <laughs> if they're way off maybe, right. but I, I don't think so. I don't know, Lily. I expected more. I'm sorry. I wanted you to either throw <laughs> up, cough, choke. I don't know, something. I know. I feel like I let you guys down. No, I'm just I'm kidding. No. Lily is a very picky eater. And honestly, I can picture in my head, due to my saucy nature and the ingredient list, I can picture what it tastes like. And just something tells me it's just a shit ranch. I wish I had someone nearby that I could make try it really fast. And be like, Tell me what you think of this. You just knock on your neighbor's go house. outside with a chicken leg. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, there it is, guys. Lily Marston tries the pink sauce. What are we titling this? I don't know. But people are going to be very disappointed. Now, you know what? What do you want from us? Production? Quality? We can't do it. Well, beautiful moment. Thank you, Lily, for sacrificing for us. I really appreciate it. That could have gone either no way. Problem. It could have been like disgusting and you might have thrown up. 
Or what if I just like loved it and then suddenly I just put it on everything? I would have loved that actually. Like if you became a pink sauce fanatic, you never know. Maybe it grows on you. Well, what I was saying to Jesse earlier is like how crazy that it sold out everywhere. Like who knows if that's just like a hype thing. People want to try it like people like us. But she's making, she has to be making a lot of money. I was just about to say the same thing where it's like, let's not take away how insane it is to be sold on shelves at Walmart, not online. And be sold out of multiple stores and all of this happening after you like totally fucked up and like. But it makes sense because it's like, you saw it on TikTok, you saw it on Instagram, everyone hated it. Everyone said it was getting moldy and exploding and it's crazy and it's gross. And so you just see it at your Walmart. You're like, oh, I could put that on my Instagram story or like something for your friends. Yeah, you know, people yeah. are gonna be curious about. It. You said people were responding to your story like crazy, excited to watch you try it. It was more on my Twitter. Oh. Just it, like, I feel like everyone's talking Topic wise has been very invested in this. Yeah, so full circle moment, Lily tries the pink sauce. I really wanted the original recipe, the one where you're not sure if you're gonna live or die. That's the kind of element I was looking for. We were in it for the risk. Shelf stable is good enough. Once the hype dies down, then you can buy it and you can try it. Oh, 100%. We'll compare. Guys, just so you know, when I try it, I'm a sauce connoisseur. Uh, a sommelier, a sauce. So her review will be much more thorough. Yeah, I, literally like my mom made fried rice and just had this like rogue teriyaki sauce and I was just fucking dousing it up. Like I sauce up anything, even things that are already saucy. I was gonna say, isn't that like, I guess you put soy sauce, not Soy sauce, sauce, but yeah, but it's not wet. I want it wet, like sopping wet in my mouth. Oh. <laughs> Anyway, what are our topics today? First official topic, because that was more of a demo, if you will. But the first official topic is good old Jaclyn Hill. I feel like every time I say her name, I say good old Jaclyn Hill. Because she's just... Because it's kind of like, oh God, what did she do now? She's one that's very persistent about like fighting the internet, you know? I was just going to say the word. I was thinking persistent. <laughs> Like there's some, sometimes, a lot of times on the internet where you just gotta let it go. You just gotta say, I'm not gonna win this one. Or the more I yeah. feel the fire, the higher the fire's gonna burn. But not Jacqueline. Jacqueline's like, no, I will end this. And so she just keeps throwing shit in. But anyway, this is actually not so much about that. This is about her sharing way too much on the internet and she should probably stop posting on Instagram stories. And also, can this just be another note of like, can people stop getting pets? They can't take care of them? Thank you. I feel like we're now PETA of the internet. Like, I, but I literally. It just doesn't feel like these are concepts that are too hard to grasp. And hers is just, I can't believe we're talking about this. You know this. what's like, crazy? Thing? Like, I remember how much thought went into you getting Max. Because you have chronic pain, because you were wondering like, is this gonna be something I can do? I remember you telling me like, in the beginning of our friendship, like, I really want a dog, but I'm too busy at work, or I'm too this and that. That's how it should be when you're deciding to get an animal. Thinking about it, heavily. Especially if you already have a bunch of pets. What makes you think you should get another one and then just like not really care for it? I'm not even making some sense. Just tell them what happened. So Jacqueline Hill got a cat, but did she? Not really. She did get a cat, but um, she doesn't let the cat inside her house. I feel like this kind of brings us back to basically during the Britney Dawn thing when we talked about, trigger warning, um, when we talked about her dog getting hit by a car and then her husband shooting it because that was the right thing to do apparently. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She had discussed how it was like an outdoor dog, like the dog liked to go adventuring and stuff. And Jesse's first response was, they're not cats. Like you can't just let them go. And I was like, yeah, there are outdoor cats. A lot of people were like, there shouldn't be outdoor cats in the comments. I want to clarify that that was not me uh, saying that you should have your cats outdoors. And I also had mentioned that growing up, I had one that was pretty much outdoors yeah. most days. That was not my choice. Well, I was like five. <laughs> well, here, guys, have you ever owned a cat that's dead set on going outside? My cat Jasmine is not an outdoor cat. But the bitch escapes. She's like, she's an escape artist that enjoys being Literally. outside. And luckily, you know, she always like stays either in my yard or something. And we always try to get her back in. But she's super fucking fast. And so sometimes she just stays outside until she comes back. And that's not like me allowing like, here, Jasmine, here's a door. Go outside. Absolutely not. Exactly. Just I did want to clarify that we are not advocating for having quote unquote outdoor cats. I Keep your pets inside. I tell my husband all the fucking time, I swear that domesticated cat that are outdoor cats are the biggest threat on local environments that there are. They kill needlessly. They hunt just for fun. So they're literally killing off entire species. <laughs> I had no idea about any of this. Oh actually. yeah, like cats will like kill birds and kill species that they're not eating. They're not hunting to like no, for prey. <laughs> just entertaining. Exactly. So they make 
local species like extinct just because they're like having fun hunting so i understand like cats shouldn't be like domesticated cats should not be outside now there's feral cats and there's a whole bunch of situations like that's not what we're talking about jacqueline hill got a cat someone referred to it as a stray cat i will say i i don't know the details surrounding how she acquired this cat i just know that there's been a bit of an uproar because she i guess has explained that the cat doesn't come inside and then when people were like why won't you let it inside if it's your cat? Then her reasoning was, can you pull up the Reddit? Yeah, so I guess someone said, why can't you let her in? And it's responding to a story, which I assume is Jacqueline explaining that she can't let the cat inside, but it looks like the cat desperately wants, but is it by a curtain? I'm confused. It's just a picture of the cat, like with its paw and it's, please, <laughs> it's cold out here. Is the curtain outside though? Girl, you think I could see that? That looks like literally I have no idea what's happening in that picture. It looks like the cat's like looking in a door, like longingly trying to get no, inside. Literally. But yeah. then there's a curtain. So that confuses me. But it's someone saying, why can't you let her in? And she obviously had to respond to this with three different numbers. It's like a bullet pointed list. It says... Number one, I am insanely allergic to cats. I have to wash my hands the second I step inside and wash my clothes immediately. I've also taken Claritin every day. Okay. Number two, the dogs will literally end up killing her. Lolly and Tipsy hate her. Number three, I don't want her clawing my furniture and I refuse to declaw her because it's inhumane. I also do want to clarify a few people commented on me mentioning something about declawing in the last episode. Did I you? was also not advocating for declawing. I was saying the only way to avoid cat scratches would be to declaw them, meaning they're inevitable. Not that you should declaw them. <laughs> Absolutely do not declaw your cats. That's the no. do we know them stance officially. Yes. I'm confused because Super. those all seem like three reasons why you don't have a cat in general. Okay, yes. And then I'm also super, uh, see, this is the, also the do we know them way is like, wait, what's happening here? Like she, yeah. so she got a cat or did she just find a cat outside and she like feeds it? Yeah, I was going to say, does it just like want to be her cat and it just like <laughs> comes to her house? Because then I would say that's not her fault. Right. But then you read number three and saying, I don't want her clawing my furniture and I refuse to declaw her. So that doesn't equal stray cat that I'm feeding. That equals I got a cat and it's outside. So here on the Reddit, it explains a little more because someone asked, is she actually adopting the cat or did she just take it in until she finds the owner? And someone replied, she says she took it in and it wasn't chipped. She hasn't mentioned anything else about finding the owner, but has said things along the lines of, I can't believe I have a cat. So to me, it makes, <laughs> what? Who says that? So to me, it seems like she decided to keep it. I hope not for the cat's sake though. Um, okay, well... That doesn't clear anything up, actually. Someone says, I wonder how she thinks this is any different than just feeding a yeah, stray. Yeah, well, that's what... I, I'm like, not to defend Jacqueline, but maybe that kind of is what this is and people are taking it too seriously. I got the vibe originally when I, someone told me this, that it's like she went and adopted a cat and then put it outside. I don't think she adopted it. I think she let the stray cat into her home. The shitty part is that she decided that when it was going to be in the 30s that the cat can't be in her house and put it outside. Oh. She then filmed the cat crying trying to get back into the house, then continued filming the cat sitting by the door while her do dogs watched it. I guess she's trying to like do the right thing, which like the right thing is just take it to a rescue. Or, like, yeah, I'm telling you, someone take away her Instagram story posting privilege. Like it just is gonna get like, stop documenting. Cause like people do things like this all the time. You see a cat, yeah. you wanna feed it. My dad fed stray cats in his job for like a million years. Like I said, with that number three thing where she's like, well, I would have to declaw her. And I'm like, so it is your cat? Here's the thing. I think she just doesn't have a good way ever of like just saying things. <laughs> And I know that sounds mean. It's like she doesn't know how to filter what yeah, she's because thinking. If she was just feeding a stray, all you had to, like with Toby, for instance, I just mentioned Toby, the dog that I, you know, rescued. Which, by the way, I, I've since found the photos. Oh, Here they are on you're screen. You're welcome. He's so freaking cute. He had to be some mix of like Pomeranian or something. He was the fucking cutest. But He's anyway. Like a little fox. Nobody ever like questioned me and was like, well, is that your dog? Because I made it very clear. Hey, guys, I'm trying to find a home for him or like resources or whatever like I wasn't documenting being like oh my god Toby my doggy I love him and then just show him outside in the freezing cold <laughs> he can't come in her she hates him if she feels like it could possibly be like someone's pet not in the sense that it's actually like someone's missing it I mean like if it has the ability it's not a feral cat in other words yeah, so yeah, like yeah. if it's a cat that could possibly have a loving home go take it to the fucking rescue that's the thing it kind of seems like she wants to like <laughs> I feel like I hate this saying for this but have her cake and eat it too where it's like I want to have a cat even though I definitely can't because of reasons 
that I just listed, number one, two, and three. And then she still wants to be like, oh, but look, I'm going to keep feeding it. So she like keeps it lingering rather than going to try and find it a home, which especially someone with her following, I feel like she would be able to do very easily. Oh, so it followed her home on a walk. So I guess it wasn't even like in her backyard. It just like kept following her. So people are just mad that like it's cold outside. And she doesn't and she let it isn't in. doing more to finding it a home. It seems like maybe people are overreacting a little bit. I don't I think agree. she's being like purposely malicious about this, but I think she could also be doing more to maybe find the cat a home. Okay, a stray cat showed up at her house. She and Jordan feed it and it stays in her backyard. She's highly allergic and has three dogs. So it's outside where it was surviving all that time prior to her showing it on Instagram. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of true. I mean, that's my point. I'm like, she didn't just, like, it's not like she went and adopted a cat and then like ditched it outside. But now people are going buck wild saying she stole the cat because she hasn't oh, gone and God. given it in. They're saying that's clearly like not a stray. I think that's a bit of a stretch. Yeah, stealing feels like a bit of a leap here. Are we missing something? Maybe, but Usually. also I feel like every, yeah, I'm like probably, but I also feel like everyone kind of just hates Jacqueline and this is kind of a situation that people are running with. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm feeling a little empty on this one. I thought in the beginning when I heard the description of what we were going to be talking about, I was like, homegirl, like abandon her cat she got like a pet smart or something yeah, you know 100 yeah, percent was what i was thinking too and this just but no. seems like i wish there was more yeah, i don't wish there no was more. You i'm don't, glad you she know. didn't abandon a cat but it but i do have like two suggestions number one take it to a rescue yeah take it to a rescue <laughs> if it seems like it could have a loving home and then number two stop posting on instagram stories those are my two like suggestions for Jacqueline Hill. And maybe have someone like proofread and condense everything you say. <laughs> Absolutely. And not your fiance, because I'm sure like he already proofreads and too much gets he, by like, him. adds to it. <laughs> yeah. All in all, I don't think any crime was committed. It's no Logan Paul Pearl situation. No, no. I, I feel a little uh, at a loss for any further. You know, I don't I, really have much to contribute here. I love and I hate that almost every topic has our, our like first impression. So sometimes we're like super like ready to go hard on something and then we're like, and by the end, we're like, oh, <laughs> no, never mind. And I, you know what? That's a good trait. You can change your mind at any time. I, I agree. You know, we got to show people what, what real looks like. Well, um, before we move on to our next topic, we do have a sponsor for this episode that we want to thank really quick. Today's episode is yes. sponsored by ZocDoc. This is honestly so freaking cool because if you guys don't know what ZocDoc is, it's basically the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient reviewed, take your insurance, are available when you need them, and treat almost every condition under the sun. Which I definitely need to use in the near future because it has been a while since I've been to the doctor. But I know, especially in recent days, uh, medical advice on TikTok has gotten to be quite popular. There's a lot of self-diagnosing going on on the internet these days. So I think ZocDoc is a great thing that involves the internet that you should be using for medical use. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I don't know if it's just because I have two kids or because healthcare can be like super scary and daunting, but I have always used things like ZocDoc because you can literally use it from your phone in your room. With ZocDoc, you can find the right doctor that meets your needs and fits your schedule with just the click of a button. It's super convenient. You can book an appointment with just a few taps in their app and start feeling better faster. Which is key because if you are a millennial like me, calling and making appointments is one of your biggest fears in life. Oh, literally. Like my mom stopped doing them and I went into full crisis. Like I don't know how to do that. I know one thing that I struggle with especially is it's so complicated to find doctors that take your insurance, especially with like specialty doctors. So ZocDoc makes it easy because you can put in your insurance and it'll help you search for just doctors that actually are in your network. So just go to ZocDoc.com slash DWKT and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then you could find and book a top rated doctor even within 24 hours sometimes. So that's amazing. That's ZocDoc.com, Z-O-C-D-O-C.com slash DWKT, ZocDoc.com slash DWKT. And thank you so much for sponsoring this podcast. Woo, give it up for ZocDoc. Let's go. I'm hoping there's applause put over here yes. and I'm not just like doing this yes. in silence. Anyway, um, yeah, let's keep going. Okay, so Pink Sauce, Jacqueline Hill, what's next? So there was the Rick and Morty guy. Oh, yeah. So I definitely have never even seen an episode of Rick and Morty. The only Same. thing I've, my only attachment to it is that we tried the Szechuan sauce, which, spoiler alert, didn't like that sauce either. 
That sounds super up my alley. Szechuan sauce, delicious. It was like when McDonald's had like only a few and people were riding because they were sold out. Yeah. I have this like sickness though that doesn't allow me to give in to hype. So like when there is like, I'm not to be a hipster or anything, but like when there's something insanely popular, like I will not go get that thing. We, I'll be like, fuck you, I'm not. We spent like, I think it was like 150 bucks off someone like off craigslist i mean Cle- it, it was clever's money it was not ours but um made for a good episode you, you, i love how i'm saying that but i'm the one that pressured you into getting the pink sauce yeah i definitely never would have driven there voluntarily anyway so i purposefully have been avoiding these dms ethan talked about it on h3 h3's back hallelujah i was on a real drought there i mean what am i supposed to watch do we know them like literally there was no podcast they, they, they always take an end of the year break but i felt like this one was so fucking mm. long it was like two to three weeks Oh, it was awful. Anyway. Happy for you. Um, so Ethan talked about it because Ethan is friends with the guy or was oh. friends with him. And he like denounced him. I did see that part. But when he showed the DMs, I purposefully did not see them. So I want to have a first reaction to these DMs because I hear they're buck fucking wild. I read some from one. It, are there from multiple girls, I assume? I have no idea. <laughs> well, what's his name, first of all? Justin Royland. I believe. Justin Roiland. So he's the creator of Rick and Morty and also the voices of like all of them or something. Or Rick and Morty. Is there more people? I don't know. Asking the wrong person. Uh, I don't know Rick and Morty like in the sense that I haven't seen it, but I know Rick and Morty because it's one of the biggest shows like ever. Yeah. So he's a very successful man. Obviously, there are various DMs that were leaked that from what I've heard are career ending and absolutely blasphemous, but I have not seen them. So this is my first reaction. I think the conclusion is that he's like a fucking creep, but let's see. One, it's to a bunch of underage girls. (gasps) Oh, I didn't know that element of it. They're not just like him being creepy. They're him being like predator creepy. Yikes. Okay. Well, um, there's this one girl named Allie... Let me see what her last name is. Gertz. Um, So she said, I'll say more later. For now, I'll just share the types of funny, quote unquote, DMs Justin Roiland would send me. Posted and deleted this last night because I was worried about any backlash, but this dude made me, someone who wrote a Rick and Morty concept album, never watch his show again. Yikes, that has to fucking suck. So he said to her, can you write a song about nine dicks? What? Hold on. What? That literally just caught me off guard. Okay. Can you write a song about nine dicks of different sized and ethnic origins hanging above your face? And then in the lyrics, describe how they each splatter you with semen. But important, the large message of the song is about how we are all the same and no more racism. Who's this Lee character? Why does he, she, question mark, have to find parking? Why are you? A- oh my God. Why are you a huge F word? What? Answer later. Holy fuck. Sorry, Allie. I'm okay. My fourth glass of wine. I'm assuming he meant on. This was all off record. Don't break my trust, you asshole. Just kidding. You're all right. As someone who's had much more than four glasses of wine at a time before. um, I was just thinking, is he like definitely a lightweight? Because I feel like four glasses is not that much. And he texted that a a minute later. So it's like, see, this is, wait, this this is one of the ones that I saw. He has like a nickname for this girl that he messages that he calls her jailbait. Jailbait? Yes. Oh my fucking God. Okay. I'm getting so stressed out. Okay. So he says, Oh, yeah. Sorry. At the airport. It's insane in the membrane. What time is it there now? And she says 1137. He says, oh, oh, so, so, so right. Is so right. And me. (gasps) Oh, my God. I I didn't know what he was saying at first. And then I read the next one. I was like, oh. Got it. I like literally stopped mid sentence because he was being racist and I was unknowingly falling into his plot. That was triggering. Whoa. Okay. So, oh my God. So he, oh my God. So instead of he's being racist and like yes. mimicking how Chinese people speak and he's basically saying, oh, it's so late, but he's saying rate like with an yes. R yes. and saying it's so, it's so late and me so Chinese. I'm literally so confused. Okay. Okay. Um, and she says, I have school tomorrow. Sad face. He says, I'm not, I'm not doing that. He says, oh, school tomorrow, tomorrow, but with two L's again, making fun. Oh no. And she says, fuck my life. And he says, you should just run away from home and go into sex slavery. You fucking. What is going on? What? Okay. You fucking stupid F word -word bitch. bitch. Just kidding. And she says, you wish, you stupid bitch, which also, I mean, if she's young, I guess I... Yeah, I was going to say, it looks like he's messaging a 14-year-old. 
<laughs> yeah, and like also power dynamic. I get it. Maybe you don't want to like confront him, but like, you this is crazy. What the fuck? Then he says, would you do video game reviews and stuff like that? I bet you'd do good. And she said, yeah, just playing games and shit. Then he said, then once you turn 18, you start. Oh my God. I just don't even understand what the mindset is. Go like, what is he doing? He said, then once you turn 18, you just start cam whoring. You can't say that. Not even as a joke. Like people want to be like, oh, comedy's dead. Why he might have been a little more comfortable with this, I guess, was because it looks by the dates that this is in 2015. So maybe it wasn't as oh. common for people to like post screenshots. But like, oh my God, are you kidding? Like in 2015, you knew not to like- uh, How old was he in 2015? Still old, I think. <laughs> was he? Because that's a long time ago. Hold on, let me see. Oh, he's 42. Still old. Yikes. I was about to be like, yeah, you know, 2015. No, I, I don't think once you're past 30, you get any young. I was going to say, so that was, to eight, like, that's eight, eight years ago. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's like seven years ago. because yeah. This was in October, it says. But so that's my age. As if I was messaging an underage person right now. Yeah, no, no, sorry. And then he yeah. says to her, why are you such jailbait? What's wrong with you in that regard? You should grow older, you dumb bitch. Why Holy shit. So even, I can't wrap my head around how he thinks, <sighs> like the creepiness of it aside, how does he think this is gonna work? Like, what is this game? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't think he has game. I don't think, that's not up for debate. He has no game. But like, oh, my thing is, was Rick and Morty around at that time? Cause I feel like it's like an old show. Let me see. I'd imagine it was, otherwise I don't know how he'd. How he'd get to talk to anyone. Yeah, so Rick and Morty, we just looked it up, has been around since December 2nd, 2013, which means he had a pretty significant status at this point, right? Which is why any of these For girls sure. are even talking to him. Like, let's be real. So the whole jailbait thing, if you don't know, I mean, you're probably a very innocent, lovely person. But um, jailbait is like you're under 18 or you like maybe just you're 17 about to turn 18 or you just turned 18 or whatever. That It's like a porn term, isn't it? I don't know where it originates, but it would be what a guy would say to a girl that they're attracted to that is going to like get them in trouble. Oh, yeah. Jailbait. That makes sense. To me, it's only used by like pervs in like porn. It's context. basically insinuating that it's like she's like a tease yeah <laughs> Oof, disgusting and then he says to her is it cool being a jailbait does the fbi follow you around arresting all the men you sleep with see now 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 why would you say that now why would you say that why would you say any of this i'm just hating all of it makes but me like, just what like if you're saying jailbait so much it's not like he was just like randomly you can't pull James Charles and be like, I didn't know their age or they lied about their age or whatever the fuck, which by the way, we never talked about the James Charles DMs, but cringe. But um, at least James, not James Charles is gross and I think very predatory and does everything wrong pretty much. But, you know, he had that excuse of like, I didn't know the age. You know, I didn't ask or for ID. Or that like people lied about the age or something. Exactly. This, that was like how he, he said knows. It. You're calling her jailbait profusely. Ah, yeah. oh, that's disgusting. Um, Let me just play this. I think this is a podcast clip which also scares me because i'm like every like cancelable thing is always on a podcast clip i have said this before it's like they forget they're filming something okay but like so do we <laughs> not in the way like we don't like r admit crimes <laughs> you remember when tommy italiano posted about us talking about him and todrick hall yeah and like we were scared to watch like his reposting of it because like we're like what did we say like sometimes you forget how harsh well, you say things yeah but i mean i i mean in the sense that it's like people saying things that are very incriminating yeah like, yeah not yeah. just stuff that's like, mean yeah that's true that's true okay let's listen to this well, as a race are we that crazy like when we were fucking to a hundred years ago uh -huh. it was little 13 year old girls if they were built like a woman Woman, they were getting married and having kids uh -huh. and now we're gonna be all precious about it i keep using the word precious today that's the word of the week which is a movie about a child molesting. precious <laughs> right and you're a down syndrome baby yeah exactly <laughs> so anyways uh -huh. uh i'm not a pedophile though i do follow i'm a the pedophile law. Uh -huh. i wait till they're 18 if 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 if, if i'm ever so lucky as to have that oh crazy that like is that like what he was talking about now i'm remembering ethan posting a, a clip about this hold on there's more let me see there's more to that podcast. Because I remember hearing something way worse than that. Something just says, oh, this is way worse, but it's... Did they delete it? We'll find it 
by the time this episode goes live. <laughs> but what it was is him saying, "I'm not really... a pedophile, though." All right, mm. Jesus Christ, mm. I didn't really want. I'm not attracted to fucking little kid bodies. I like fucking <laughs> women body. Look, I'll say, look, a fucking 14 year old that looks like she's 18 and like big titties mm-hmm. and a nice, yeah. like, of course mm, I'm, gonna, yeah. I'm attracted to that. Oh yeah. That's why this whole Chris Hansen thing. I'm like. Fuck you, man. They, mm-hmm. These girls are like, they look, they're fully developed and they're like, they talking online. I want, I want you to fuck you me. You mean the, the, the girls that old men or women pretend to be to lure the pedophiles into the house? Yeah, but they would email photos uh-huh. of what they look like. Uh-huh. And the ones I saw were like, that girl's fully fucking Va-va-voom. developed woman. Uh-huh. Yeah, like. Ew, don't. Say, like, just keep your mouth shut. Well, the thing is, to me, I mean, every time I I know people have, like, obvious, like, it has to be some sort of mental illness. Not to, like, excuse it, but, like, when we're talking, like, pedophilia and stuff, like, that has to be some form of, like, something went wrong there. Like, that's not typical in my eyes. I actually just saw someone had tweeted out an article recently, and it was trying to make it seem like LGBTQ, like, the community was, is, like, aligned with which that entire narrative is so absurd yeah. I can't even handle it and it's been around for a long time now but it was because the article was insinuating that it feel it was like a mental health problem and I think that a lot of people take that it's like hard for them to process that so they don't take it as what it really means and instead they think you're kind of excusing right. the behavior yeah. or justifying the behavior which is absolutely not the case I think what a lot of people want there to be more research and like studies to look into is for the people that god forbid you were attracted to children but you were able to recognize that that was wrong and like seek help exactly if there was somewhere you could go that you wouldn't be met with shame and judgment and instead are met by a person that tries to figure out why you have that because that isn't normal and there is maybe something you need to unpack rather than them just trying to bury it themselves and then eventually act on it. Yeah, I don't even know why that's controversial because at the end of the day, the ultimate result that we want at the end of the day is for less minors to be hurt by these people. Exactly. And it feels... Like, why wouldn't you offer a preventative measure if you could? Yeah, and and the thing is, too, is, like I said, I think that these people obviously have something very, very wrong with them because even saying something like this, and obviously when you realize it's a pattern, it becomes much more disturbing. It can't just be written off as a joke. Yeah. But for me... I'm so not attracted to, it actually changes every year because like anyone younger than me, my husband is a year younger than me and I'm like, why? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't like that. I'm like, you should be older than me. Like, I don't, literally, it feels weird to me. And as I get older, the age of like, even acceptable to find them attractive goes up and up and up with me. Like, as I get older. And I think there's, there's other things that are, that need to be taken into account, which again, just reinforce the fact that it is a mental health issue to my knowledge nine out of ten times and it's the same with like not that I'm pedophilia and being a serial killer are not the same things but I did take a class on serial killers in college and so much of it like rarely is there someone that is a serial killer or someone even I think that is a pedophile that just is naturally born like that it's that like nine out of 10 times, usually abusers have been abused and that has messed up something that has then given them that urge that they're doing it now to other people. I know people always get mad with that too because they're like, you know, other people who have been abused are like, well, I didn't fucking turn it. But I think it's like a series of events. Did you ever, I know totally not related, but did you ever, I mean, kind of, but did you ever hear about that thing where like all serial killers have like head injuries or like a lot of them have had like specific no, but traumatic I head that. injuries? Because because it's, it's another thing. It's like how they're all the same too. How it's like the signs. It's a disconnect. Like they've killed animals when yeah. they're little. Like they the lack of empathy. And then with files, I know it's far less about like – because I think – the big thing with the general public is that we're all like, how are you attracted to kids? That's so gross. And I agree. That's my first reaction as well. But then when you read more into it, it's not as much about the attraction, I think, as it is about the power dynamic and them exerting power over someone else. Yeah, no, 100%. I think, I mean, I know this is like, we got like super into this dark, (laughs) weird conversation to be having. I know, but it is weird because I look at people like this and I'm like, dude, your show was successful. You, you know, why do people 
people do. I mean, obviously it has to be, you, you're fucked up in the brain. Like there's no other way to yeah, put it. Exactly. Because why would you throw your whole life away? Like I think when I first started Vine, I got a little too close friendship wise to people where I would be like, everyone could be my friend type of thing. And I think I've even said that like on Q&A because my, one of my best friends, Leslie, she is someone I met at a meetup. Like she showed up at a meetup and I was just like, yo, we vibe, let's be friends. And then we were friends and we even lived together in Los Angeles for a while. It just seemed like, who cares? I'm a normal girl. But like, why would you message a son? I think even with your situation though, it's like you met Leslie, you were like around the same age. Your audience wasn't a bunch of like children necessarily. I know. Like, right. no, that's yeah. the thing. It's like he has access to very impressionable, vulnerable young people that then he's saying gross stuff to because he knows he can get away with saying it to them. And because they're not going to fight back like a normal, not even fight back or just like stop talking like a, a normal adult would because they're talking to the creator of Rick and Morty. I could love Rick and Morty, but if the creator did that to me as a 32 year old, I'd be like, ew, what's going on? You know this what? Now that I think about it, it's a man thing. Like obviously a man in 2015 was on top of the fucking world. Like there's no way when anyone- did, When did Me Too happen? Was that like 2016? Uh, God, I feel like Me Too happened way later, like 2018 or something. I feel like it didn't happen for a long but time. After this. Yeah, I, I think so. Like, I feel like a man that was successful at that time, or you were a Chris D'Elia or whoever the fuck you thought you were, you were just running a fucking muck because you could, because nobody was going to call you out on it. This person had these DMs forever. That's okay. So I have a question about that. It's like, do you think all of these men are sitting there being like, fuck, like just waiting yes. for the moment that this is yes. about to break? Or... Do you think that they're that like disillusioned that they don't even realize that it was wrong or that they like? No, I think that men know. And I think that's why you see so many people. I've even witnessed like my male cousins like making jokes about it and stuff. And like, oh, we can't say anything because you're going to get a sexual harassment lawsuit. And I'm like, Jeez. you're just a fucking creep. All right. That's why you can't say shit because everything that comes out of your turd little mouth is creepy. What's interesting is Ethan actually during his break, he posted onto his Ethan Klein channel that the real ones know about. And and he posted about how basically men that are of a certain status, if you're famous or you're whatever, you should not have one night stands for sure. Like you should not go out and just like have sex with a woman like at a bar or something. And you shouldn't really have casual sex at all. Like that's what he was saying. Cause he's like, yeah. you're this person that holds all this power and you don't know if they're going to regret that because they're just in a position or in a place or in a time where they feel like, oh, I have to do this because this is this person or whatever. And a lot of people were upset at that take, but a lot of people were like, honestly, we would avoid a lot of fucking issues if men behave that way. Sometimes I think about it and I know I talked, I think it was the last episode where I talked about how I went to Dane Cook's house and why I'm thinking about it right now is because my brother, my, my oldest brother, was so pissed when he found out that I was going there because in his mind, first of all, like he's a man, so men know how gross they are. But like literally, like he was just like, do not do that. He's so much older than you. Like he's like this famous dude. Why the fuck are you going to his house? Like he got pissed at well, me I mean, for going. Pause. You know that he's like, he, didn't he get engaged recently to his girlfriend? She's like literally 20. That's what I said in the last episode. I said she was two years old, <laughs> but like she's very young. And like, that is weird. The only thing that I have to say about that is like he was very kind and like didn't make me feel weird at fucking all like literally we were just like jamming playing guitar talking like it was not weird at all and that could have been a multitude of things including maybe he just wasn't attracted to me he didn't want it he just wanted to like have a friend I don't fucking know what yeah. it was but it was a lot different than I thought it was gonna be and like I said my brother was like do not go to his fucking house because men have run a fucking muck for so long doing whatever the fuck they want to do DMing whatever the fuck they want to DM and not thinking that anyone was gonna hold them accountable to it now, now, do I want to answer your question and say, absolutely. Men are clenching their tight little butt cheeks just waiting for the day that their fucking shit is coming out. And you know what? Good. I can't imagine how many are out there sitting there being like, fuck, when is the day that this girl is going to post this? Good. Like, I, that just, it kind of makes me a little giddy inside. It makes today a better day. <laughs> I hope they live in fear. Also, wait, not to go on another tangent, but that just reminded me of it. Did you see recently, and now I can't remember who it is, because I don't think I knew any of the people personally or like knew of them involved, but some girl went on Twitter recently and posted how she was R-worded at a party that she had gone to and it was in LA. Yes, and it was, I'm pretty I saw sure. it. Kai? Yeah, 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 yeah. That 
that name was involved. The girl's name is jo Jovi. So basically she went on Twitter, but I guess it's been deleted now, but she posted this whole thread that she went to a party that her friend had invited her to, who is this Kai. He's a Twitch S streamer, I think. Kai Sinat. So he invited her to the party and then apparently she had a few drinks and was planning on leaving. But then Kai was like, no, no, don't leave. Come upstairs in this bedroom yeah. and sleep up there. It'll be safer. Yeah. He told me I'd be safer upstairs since I was drunk and nobody would bother me. However, I fell asleep since I thought I was safe due to there being security and Kai's confirmation. And then apparently she woke up to being. She, it's described, like she had dropped a bunch of the texts with him and it was pretty bad. Yeah. So then it was afterwards, I guess, then she reaches yeah. out to Kai and explains what happened. And he just like, doesn't really respond that much. Like he's kind of just like, I, he doesn't actually respond like this, but it's kind of like, damn, that sucks. Well, she kept asking him, she was describing mm -hmm. the guy who did it and he kept playing dumb and being like, I I'm looking for the guy. And, and she ended up finding a picture of mm -hmm. Kai with this guy and also and found like, out that they were very you know close. Him. Yeah, she's like, you know him, you're fucking playing with me. And he's like, oh, I've been trying to figure out who it was. It was like just basically him playing dumb, which you know, was him trying to protect his friend. And I don't think in, in a way where he like obviously wanted what happened to happen or facilitated it in any way, but definitely in a way where like, Fuck you, bro. Like, seriously. I've honestly seen a lot of people, though, that are speculating it was like a setup or something. Could you imagine having a friend that you trusted that, oh my God, I literally, the number of times I've been in that exact situation that a guy friend has been like, no problem, sleep in my room. If then they like sent in a guy to go, I don't even know how, even if he didn't set it up, which again, alleged for legal purposes. <laughs> I don't even know how anyone, cause I know how the fucking internet is in situations like this, but like, dude, you're gonna tell me she was drunk and you told her go upstairs and she like let herself be in that vulnerable state of like you know when you're fucking drunk and you just need to go to sleep and you're just tired whatever like what the fly that for this to happen is so absolute I mean it's foul regardless but like this situation like you trusted your friend you went upstairs and some freak that your friend is very very close friends with came up and violently r-worded you like get the fuck out of here and then you don't know who he is you've never seen him before Fuck out of here. That alone and that you found out that he was lying about knowing him. Like, I, I can't imagine how betrayed you would feel. And just in case anyone has shit to say about her deleting the tweets, like, I fucking get it. I fucking get it. Feeling in one moment like you needed to say something and then feeling like that was the biggest mistake you've ever made because on top of the shit you're already dealing with, now you're dealing with backlash of thousands and thousands and thousands of people. I fucking get it. So if anyone has shit to say about her deleting it, you fuck out of here too. And I think okay? the reason she she posted it to begin with wasn't that wasn't like her immediate reaction it was that she went to the right. police and she went to the hospital she did a kit and that they like weren't pursuing it oh i didn't know that i didn't know i don't that. know the Fuck. exact details but it's something along those lines it's like her she was like was this, this in california i believe so because i was about to say not surprised <laughs> speaking from experience sounds like california oh yeah wow so the fact that it says i sent him pictures of the person and got no response about it until i got hard evidence that they knew each other and even then i didn't get a name like are you kidding wow. yeah so all of it the whole threat is gone but that's yeah that was kind of like a side note and while we're here, maybe we should talk about Andrew Callahan. <laughs> like, there's so many fucking oh God. horrendous just... SA allegations. Like, are you kidding I'm me? Just... Can you fucking men stop? The thing is that my, my family is majority men. So I deal with a lot of shit and have like kind of all the way growing up. Like just hearing them say the most misogynistic, crazy bullshit of mm -hmm. life. And one of them... Ugh, I game now, I'm an Xbox gamer. So when I was on Xbox with them, they were saying basically that like men are also scared to like walk the street at night. And like men are also, you know, like men have to go through things too. Why do women basically always act Why so fucking scared? scared all the time? That's what I asked him. I go, who are men scared of? Men? Is it women? <laughs> and he goes, no, I mean, you're right. There are crazy men. And I go, no, it's just always fucking crazy men. It's always fucking crazy men. Like get out of here. You guys at least like you have the blanket of like, maybe there's a small chance that they don't want to fuck you. That's the best chance you fucking have. We don't have that chance nine times out of 10. So when you ask women, it's the saddest shit ever. But have you seen when they ask women, what would you do if there were no men for 24 hours? And it's like, go on a walk outside at night. <laughs> Literally, just like walk to the store without thinking someone's about to fucking slit my throat. Like guys, it's not that, I, I feel like I always have to justify this because we do have some male viewers that get real peeved that, when we get to. No, I, I read this actually the other day. It's someone going, if you're a man that gets offended, 
period when women talk about this, then you're, you're probably the man part we're of the problem. About. Because any other men would understand that it, it never means, like, there's always exceptions to the rule. We're yeah. not referring to literally every man. There's obviously good men out there. But yeah. when you're talking about the seemingly large majority. Yeah. I mean, I'm married. I'm obviously, I'm into the men, okay? I've dated many men. I'm married to a man. I feel like when people are like, I have a black friend <laughs> when they're like accused of being racist. I have a husband and no, I have brothers I, I would think that, stuff the, that I love. The men that understand where we're coming from are not the men that are going to get mad for us talking about it. Oh, I mean, the main person I ran to about hating men is my husband. And he's just there like, yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> well, and I'm like, it should make those men angry, not at the women ranting about it, but at the men that are forcing that to become a common thing. Like, that's who's representing you. These yep. men that are the reason. The Andrew women... Tates of the world. Exactly. Yeah. Um, fun times, real lighthearted. Oh my God, else? wait, one more note on that though. That is such like full circle with Andrew Tate is exactly like what we talked about last episode. That's the problem with so many men is that they refuse to think like Andrew Tate might actually be guilty of sex trafficking because they're like, no, women are just trying to tear him down and stuff. And it's like, he admitted it and you still can't listen because you have such a distorted view of male-female relationships in your head. Have you heard? I'm so sorry to interrupt no, you, but you, just it just reminded me. The Andrew Tate voice messages that just came out? Yes, because they actually came out before the last podcast. But Did they? Yeah, and honestly, his fans are all like, sounds like AI. I'm like, what the fuck does that mean? Brain rot. It's brain rot. All of them. But anyway, if you haven't heard... They're bad. It's him like blatantly admitting to R wording a, a girl. And choking her. But only a little. Oh my God. I swear to God. I, that man. Keep him in jail. And how's he tweeting from jail? We need to get to the bottom of this. I don't know. But it's like, it's such a, it exists on a spectrum because you have someone like Andrew Tate who's like, I choked you and you didn't pass out. What's the big deal? And then you have someone like Andrew Callahan who gets caught and he's like, well, I didn't realize that no meant no. And it's like, why not? <laughs> well, it's not hard to figure out why not. Because the entire world for a man from the moment he's born is like, here's everything. Like, go get it. The world is your fucking oyster. And they are literally, I'm not like excusing anything that fucking guy did. I have no attachment or anything to him. But like, that's what all men are told. I've seen it with my brothers, like people literally telling them those things. My cousins, people telling them those things of like, yeah, like when a girl tells you no, she's just playing hard to get. Yeah, just or, like, you know, shit like that. Well, and then you think literally. of like the guy in that, in the the Bradley Martin um, Aiden Ross interview that was like well what's wrong with that if they're uh, legal age of consent and it's like it, he just explained that it's sex trafficking what do you mean why like why well and there's people that don't believe in spousal or oh, relationship that, that's you know, actually yeah, 100% that's like the epitome of like anyone I think that is an Andrew Tate fan would probably agree with that oh 100% because they're like well when you it's get married property. you sign up to be they can have sex with you whenever and that's the thing where it's just like guys Listen, I mean, not that ev uh, those people are magically going to listen to us, but like, you know what? Actually, just let them all get canceled. I'm not going to say a word. Do what you do. And, uh, not if it's hurting anyone, but like you guys have already done what you've done. And I just can't wait for the day where you have to face your uh, Andrew Callahan, Andrew Tate. Uh, what's this other guy's name? Rick and Morty guys. Uh, fucking Justin Roiland. That fate. You know, you fuck around with people. You're going to find out. We're not in the fucking stage of like you get away with shit and you're in the shadows and you're Chris D'Elia inviting mad girls to your fucking show. We're not in that stage anymore, honey. And that's the We're thing. It's like world. how many times have you even personally, because I know I have experienced something that's like, well, I mean, like it wasn't hurting anyone. It was not big of a deal. Like behavior from a man that you were around where it was really? something inappropriate that we've a even times. brushed it off. It's like, well, it's not that big of a deal. Well, guess what? When you add them all together, it is a big deal because this is the kind of culture it creates. It's insane. And the things that we were conditioned to just put up with, mm -hmm. you know, I thought when I went through, you know, being R-worded or whatever, that that was the only time that had happened. And then I found out what the laws are. And I'm like, Oh no, it's happened before. <gasps> like there's like, like, are you kidding me? Like if someone coerces you, if you say no and they do it anyway, that's really, like I had no idea because we're literally conditioned to just be like, 
Well, unless you're like basically like punched in the face and like held down and being told that's I that, think like, one of the biggest misconceptions from the men's point of view. It's like if there's not yeah. violence involved, it was fine. Spoiler alert: that's not the case. And I feel like we're in like kindergarten where we have to explain to men like if it's not enthusiastic consent, it's not consent, and it's just bizarre. I saw a tweet that was like the fastest way for men to learn about consent is for for straight men to learn about consent is for a gay guy. To come on to them. Oh my god. <laughs> Suddenly totally they become it. an like, expert. They're literally like, yeah, let a gay guy come up to me. I punch him in the face. Like, it's literally fucking insane. It drives me insane. And, and then I look back and I'm like, dude, the most I ever got hit on, I feel like I've said this on this podcast, I was like 13 walking through Dolphin Mall by like old oh. men. Like, I'm talking 50s, 60s, telling me, ay, mira que rica tu eres. Like, really nasty fucking shit. And I was like 13. I didn't even have tits. I mean, like, it's the, literally insane. Even this is something that happened when I was older, like just a few years ago, um, whenever we went to Cabo um, with Clever. And so it was like way after college, but we went to um, Mango Deck, which like, did you, did you go to Cabo if you didn't go to Mango Deck? Usually when I'd been there, I'd been like super, super drunk. When I was there with Clever, we weren't that drunk yet. And we were like going to sit at a table and some really drunk spring break guy walked past us and literally like takes his arm and just grabs the back of my neck and tries to start making out with me. Just a random Ugh. person. I literally like am sober. So I'm like backed up. I was like, what the fuck are you doing? And the waiters and stuff there, I'm yelling. Like it was in the middle of the day, broad daylight and no one did anything. Oh yeah. Just another day in Cabo, Nothing. Mango, whatever like, the fuck I, you said. What is going on? You know what? It's not even to be like, what do they call it when they get mad that people suffer with real life issues, like victim Olympics or something? Oh. They call it like <gasps> crime in a river, victim Olympics. It's like, okay, I'm just telling you about a hard time I had. No, I say all the time. It's like, I don't understand how I haven't had yeah. any worse experiences because I know of situations that I have been in that I'm like, wow, I'm really lucky nothing happened. But it's not a matter of one-upping people's experiences. It's sharing them because I think a lot of men don't even realize that it happens. Which again, I think the majority of our audience is female, so I don't know how productive this conversation is, but you know. Even <laughs> then, like, I feel like the men that actually watch us would be not the men we're talking about. Yeah, I was like, I don't think you'd still be watching if you were like yeah. some woman hater. Although we but... did get a few when we did our Andrew Tate episode. What was it? He's like, Andrew Tate's the best, you dumb bitches. Or like just... I think those people are the ones that are searching Andrew Tate on YouTube and literally people yeah i mean this him. really went off the rails but like men am i right seems like there's a through line through all of our episodes uh, it's unreal and then it, it's really frustrating to hear from like certain perspectives that it's like cancel culture is so bad and women just hate men these days and it's like no they're finally speaking up about all the shit you've been doing to them for years like you guys don't know, especially from a man's perspective, like what it was like to live through the fucking 2000s as a woman or a girl. It was a different fucking universe. And we did just have to sit back and take shit and be hit on in a mall when you're fucking 10 years old and shit. We did have to just deal with that. It's crazy to see also like on one hand how people have been much more vocal and like speaking out about it. But then also like, did you see recently and I don't know the details about it, so I'm not gonna make this a real topic, but something with like the dress code at, I don't know if it was the, not the Supreme Court, but like yes. Congress or some kind of government thing. It was like they can't wear like it was a whole discussion on like the dress code of women and how they have to dress professional and all this shit. And I'm like, yeah, how are we simultaneously moving forward in some aspects? And then also like we have the abortion stuff and then we have stuff like this where it's like because the men can't focus, you need to cover your arms. Like, I don't understand it. And then women enforcing it as well. Every time someone's like, well, there's women that are like they agree with us. And I'm like, like, yeah, and there's like black people who fought for slavery. Like, like I understand <laughs> there's people on the team fighting against themselves every day, okay? The whole Supreme Court thing, and I know it was like in Missouri or something. Like, it wasn't like, I don't know. I have no idea. But um, it was a state thing. It wasn't like a, a nationwide situation. But you know what? If Mitch McConnell, I was going to say something really mean there. <laughs> I was going to say, if he can wear his neck outside of his shirt every day and we have to stare at it. Women can wear their tits out and I don't give a fuck. That reminds me. 
reminds me of like middle school dress codes where it's like you no your strap straps. has to be this thick. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, yeah. oh my God, because the boys can't handle like they're gonna get boners because a bunch of girls are wearing spaghetti straps, then we have a problem. Literally, we do have a problem, but no one's gonna address the fact that boys are just like horny and weird and need to go away. That's the yeah, problem. I feel like, should we just send them all to boarding school for the first like 20 years? Yeah, of their and life? if it is in fact, because some people are like, well, men just have more testosterone. Can we take it out? Let's do some mass experimenting. I'm down. If you guys need more estrogen, what is that movie? Is it John Tucker Must Die? Yes, it's, yes, and they give him they give him estrogen or something. Estrogen and his, his nipples start hurting. Yeah, I was say his no, back start it's the other woman. I thought it was John Tucker Must Die, but that's no, way it too, is because it's when he's playing way. basketball and he starts crying. Damn, they give him estrogen in a lot of movies. They do it in the other woman too. They I put don't know in if it's smoothies. estrogen, but they put something in his his like yeah, and he gets like engorged fucking nips. Yes, yeah, yes. like that's what we need to do to all men. <laughs> Petition for all men to get rolling gorge nips to gain compassion for the female kind. Anyway. Well. Um, <laughs> ZocDoc is going to be like, why did you put us on this episode? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> okay, let's end things on something that's pretty quick because we don't have a whole lot of details about. But was it today that he tweeted that? Yeah. Okay, so today, breaking news. Um, right now it is Wednesday, January 18th. Bryce Hall tweeted out, and I quote, I have been hiding this from social media for about six months now and felt it was the right thing to do, but with rumors starting to spread, thought I'd address it. Yes, I will be a father in 2023. No, I won't reveal the baby mama out of respect for her privacy. Um, a few things to unpack here. <laughs> One, congratulations. Um, two, you couldn't have just said the mother. <laughs> Baby mama? I know. I was telling Lily, I'm like, I know baby mama obviously is an expression, but I just feel like in a formal PR tweet, not the place. It was like, serious, serious. Oh, really? That was your word choice? No, I won't reveal the baby mama. I felt like the biggest takeaway from most people here was, is this a joke? Or, like, they couldn't tell if it was serious or not. But it seems... No. I think, like, it's serious. No, no, no. This, this would not be a joke. Um, I just personally, like, it's not... <sighs> I am such a firm believer that like not everybody needs to have kids. And I'm not saying he doesn't need to have kids. I think that he's in a very immature stage in his life to have kids. And therefore I, you know, wish him the best, but it is very fucking hard. And the only way to do it right is to change your whole fucking life. And I don't think he's going to do that. Especially just like, no, I won't reveal the baby mama. So he's not with the mom, obviously, which power to him. He's like claiming, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, like you're going to stay and you're not going to like leave your child that you brought into this world. I don't know where I stand. Props to him for staying, but also... You you have no fucking idea what is about to rock the shit out I just of your like, life. It's, this is going to be a big shift for him if he's really going to be involved. This reminds me of when I told Lily I was pregnant with my son for the first time. And what? I remember... I, you don't remember? No. I was in like a grocery store. I'll never forget. I must have been like a Publix in Miami or something. And when I told her, she literally was like, oh my God, what do we feel about this? <laughs> You were just like, good, bad, like, oh my basically. God, are we happy? <laughs> Literally, it was like that. And I was just like, no, yeah, good, good. It's okay. She's like, oh, wonderful. Because it's like, holy shit, that's a kid. Like, what the that's, fuck? It's, it's like, a life-changing thing. And especially, like you just said, if you aren't planning for it, which And you, I had we're just not. been like crying on your couch like six months before then listening to Adele or something. So, you know, like, it, I get it. But what I'm saying is like, holy shit, kids are hard. Like, it's just like, good luck to you. But I see it as like your baby mom mama is gonna have to be fucking doing a lot of raising that's what i feel but we'll see maybe he turns out to be a super involved awesome dad who knows good for him well i will say it's i think this current bryce hall is better than the bryce hall we were witnessing a few years ago he definitely has had like a little oh, bit yeah. of a redemption arc yes. not to say that he doesn't still seem like someone that i wouldn't necessarily peg as being a father of the super year. involved super dad <laughs> yeah but um again maybe we're wrong and maybe actually oh my god wait i just had a flashback i've seen a clip of him talking i'm pretty sure it was him and it's super random because he's talking to a celebrity about it and i was like where did this clip come from I saw it on tiktok hmm. It's him talking to someone about um, his dad never being around. So, I mean, fingers crossed that maybe he'll oh, try and, like, yeah, be there for that. his kid because his dad wasn't there for him. I had no idea about that. And
And you know what? A lot of people gave me shit when I was pregnant and engaged. Like all of a sudden people were like, Jesse, the fucking... They treated me like the Tanamojo of the internet at that time. You know, they're very like, you're such a fucking disaster. And I always knew I'd be an awesome mom. I was like, you guys have no idea. Like I've always wanted to be a mom. Like there's behind the scenes that you never see of someone. So I guess he could surprise us. Bryce Hall, super dad of the year. I have to say that that probably would... I'm not probably. That would definitely suck to have like the whole world immediately be like, he's going to be the shittiest dad ever when like he he literally hasn't he's like how do you know (laughs) that's true that's true so i mean yeah and uh, all the best we'll see wait all the best to you bryce hall after talking shit for five minutes but all the best to you anyway i think that's it for today's episode it was quite a doozy you know how it is i I don't need to explain it anymore you guys know what you're getting into when you click on these episodes thank you for joining us staying through all the way if you did there's surprisingly a lot more people that do that than you would think I know. That's it. We love you guys and we'll see you on Sunday. Bye. Bye.